Well, I've been standing here in the freezing cold looking at this thing long enough, trying to figure out how I'm going to get it off of my truck. Uh, the guy had a fork truck, so he loaded it with this, you know, on this pallet right on there. But uh, I don't have a fork truck, so I got no way to fork this thing. I'm forked, so, <laughs> so I've got to lift it from overhead somehow, and there are just no lift points that I can see that uh, are occurring to me. I'm thinking maybe I might be able to take, snake some straps somewhere, but I'm not too thrilled about the prospect of, of that. Uh, so I've been looking at this, and it occurs to me that I think I can take that whole top assembly off of this cabinet. Uh, it looks to me, by design, the lower half of the ways, for lack of a better word, that this whole thing rides on are welded to the top of this cabinet. And then the upper half of the ways, basically, it slides in there. So theoretically, this whole assembly right here with everything above it, if it were slid out past its uh, stop, that this could be completely slid out and removed from the machine altogether. Now, that being said, the question is, well, how would you get it to go past its stop? Up underneath here, there is what appears to be the nut for the lead screw. And I noticed that by design, it looks like it's bolted with two cap screws, two cap screw bolts right there. See that right there, that whole assembly right there? I think that can be unbolted right there. And with that unbolted, I think there'd be nothing to stop this whole thing from being slid out on this, uh, out in this direction. So I want, I'm wondering whether or not I could actually bring the loader on the backhoe up here and put the loader out in the front here and slide this out onto the uh, onto the loader. Of course, that's a lot of weight. Uh, I'm also looking at this hand wheel and thinking this hand wheel is in great peril if I leave it on there. So if I can get that hand wheel off, that would be that would be nice because that would protect that sucker from getting destroyed. Ready to do battle. Power screwdriver, Sharpie pen, labeling tape, a couple of empty bottles, there's screws, Allen wrenches, and all the bits I should be able to, uh, I should need for this. I'm gonna start by taking this sheet metal off of this whole top assembly here, taking a look at how that's made, seeing whether or not that whole spindle assembly with the motor and the shaft, which is a good, good significant chunk of weight, whether or not that can be removed by itself, that'll help. So as I go along and I take these screws out, I'll uh, put them in a jar and I'll label the jar as to where they came out. So hopefully I can get all the screws back where they uh, came out of originally. And uh, I'll update you as I go along. Well, it didn't take long before I realized I was going to have to add some tools to my arsenal here for this job. This is a flex head extension. This is really handy for getting where the uh, drill can't quite get into. This works in many situations and then a couple of shorter screwdrivers, manual screwdrivers and pliers to undo a fitting at the top and uh, we're back to it. So this back of this top cover actually screws down into the flange on this cover right here. So I've got these screws out but there's two screws under here that go into the motor and then these screws that come through this cover into the back, they all have to come out. Well, I got all the screws out of this cover, and I got this back cover removed. I can already see there's a lot more going on inside there than I would have expected. Um, these piston-looking things right here are intriguing. I'm venturing to guess they have something to do with this Vibrasorb, Vibrasorb construction that's on the side here on this label. I think it's some kind of vibration dampening system, maybe. Mm, hope that's not going to be too much of a nightmare. The cooling system looks like here's one of the hoses just kind of sitting here loose. I think this hose originally went over to one of these two. There's two spouts on there, on here. 
and then uh, so you get two cooling controls here so probably another line went from here to there that's missing then there's a big line coming out here I don't know what that went to it's not going anywhere right now and then that's the light that's the cord to the light and this hose right here must be well I thought it was to feed the coolant there but that just comes down to the back here to a ball valve on the back I wonder if that's for draining the system I wonder if that's for draining the coolant almost looks like maybe by design all the coolant would run off of here and then maybe down into the top of the machine here I haven't figured out yet well I gotta disconnect some of this stuff up here because it's the only way I'm gonna get this top cover off. So this little metal plate is held on with uh, four Allen's head screws as opposed to all the regular screws everywhere else. And that uncovers this slot, which I think will now allow me to pull this cover straight up and off of here. And I might have to remove this knob. Hmm. Okay, I think this is a locking knob for the elevation screw right here. So I'm wondering if I just unscrew it all the way, if it'll come out. Yeah, it does. Now I think this whole cover will come off. Wow. Um, if I didn't know any better, I'd say I'm looking at the top of concrete. It almost appears as if these columns were filled with cement. I wonder if that's to give it extra mass, which begs the question whether or not there's cement in this actual base, which would, that would account for a lot of that weight. Uh, very interesting. I also just saw this sitting like this. That's not right. But then I noticed there's a matching one on this side and what it is is it's a rod comes up from down below by the looks of it comes up through here and there's a clip well there's the bracket and there's the spring and there's the rod and all that appears to do is allow this to move up and down helps has something to do with helping this cover slide up and down as as the uh, elevation is activated so that's, that's an easy fix. Oh, I see what it is. This, this cover is in three sections. There's a lower section here, there's this section here, and then this is the upper section. So this is made to be able to move up. So the other end of that rod is actually on a, a bracket on that other cover part. That's kind of neat. So the only thing keeping this cover uh, in my way right now is the, the cord for the light. This plastic zip tied to the main power cord for the uh, for the spindle. All right, now with the uh, cover unfastened from this column, I can actually just move it up and down. You can see how that how that whole system with the rods is supposed to work to allow this to go up and down. So it looks like to get this cover off, I'm going to have to undo these little snap rings here. These little retaining rings. Well, I tell you what, I'm pretty annoyed. Those little snap rings right there are really strong. I just snapped off the nub on the only pair of snap ring pliers I had that would fit that. So, uh, that kind of stinks. Luckily, these weren't, these were just some cheaper ones. And the next size I have up, the, uh, pins are too big to go in those holes I'm gonna see if I can avoid taking that up, taking those off see if that won't see if maybe I can't get that bottom one to come with the upper one I'm gonna take these screws out here that's gonna let me take out that inner one maybe I don't know let's see nah, that's not gonna let me get that cover off that cover is gonna come off easily once this whole spindle head assembly is removed and I see big cap screws down in there there's four going across the back here looks like there's some in the front too gonna be hard to get to though 
Hmm. I wonder if I can manually elevate this thing up higher and give me a little more access in there. It's interesting to me that I would find this roll pin sitting right here. Because I bet you it's the roll pin for the elevation handle that's missing. So I was able to elevate this head a little more. I could see two cap screws in the front, but I would expect them to be also in these front corners that I can't see because of this whole shroud assembly. So I went back to the plan of taking these snap rings off and luckily I found another pair of snap ring pliers that I had that did fit. I was able to get the three that was still on there out and I can actually see the fourth one laying down inside there. Okay, so I pushed the rods down out of the holes on the top of this part of the shroud, got the springs out and then I manually elevated the uh, whole assembly even further so that I could lift this up tilt it out through the front now that's free and clear so now I gotta see if I can get okay I see now there are screws here that I couldn't see before you could get those screws out this front piece will come off and then I bet you I could take this back off the rear and that'll expose the whole base hopefully I just traversed the whole table out that way so I can get some room to get a screwdriver in here all right take the four screws out and remove this plate and remove this whole rear assembly. So this assembly with the notch cut out like that is the uh, one that the bottoms of those rods sticks into. You can see the little lines where the springs were sitting. And as opposed to this one's got a square cut out. That's the upper, upper sliding assembly. With that cover removed, it reveals yet another panel in the front that once removed will take the last of these uh, shroud assemblies off. Oh, correction, uh, with the exception of since this is the fixed one that doesn't slide up and down, it's also attached at the bottom. Interestingly enough, the bottom screws are all Allen head screws, but these screws are, again, regular. I can't get this. Oh, missed a screw. Oh, that's weird. There's an extra screw in the corner here. Hmm. Oh, I see. They're using regular head screws to attach this to this. And then they're using Allen head screws to attach this to the base. There we go. There's the four pins that the springs uh, and the whole mechanism slides up and down on. There's the, there's the snap ring that had come off. Turns out there are only two bolts up in the front. And then that looks, this looks like it might be a, just a locator pin. There's another one here. This looks like a locator pin. And then four big bolts in the back. This is intriguing. What the, oh, well, that is a bolt head that's sheared off of somewhere. Where? Huh. It actually looks like that size right there. I wonder if one of these was replaced at some point. So I have every reason to believe that if I take out those five bolts that I can actually remove this whole upper spindle assembly with this whole base um, from overhead. I could just lift it off. I could put a strap easily. I could strap this thing and lift it. So I'm going to take this plate off the back here to get to the wiring so I can undo this cable. Well, that is not at all what I expected to see when I opened this motor up. All you could see is just the, the slightest amount of wires going uh, directly into the windings. See, there's all this wiring data on the back here, so I thought there might be some sort of uh, terminal plate inside there. But apparently, the wiring data is up here, but they, they probably intend for you to do all of your wiring down inside that big box over there, so... We're not going to disconnect this. Not at this part. We're going to have to disconnect the other end of this whole watertight, uh, liquid tight conduit at the main control box. Well, the automatic oiling feed system, uh, the only things that feeds on this upper assembly are the, uh, it actually drips oil right onto this for this uh, elevation screw. 
and then it uh, pumps oil into these two cylinders here to keep these posts lubricated so if I remove this little uh, rigid line right here I just unscrewed this end from this over here from the bottom here then when I go to lift this off I won't have to worry about damaging that line I think before I go through the trouble of opening up that panel and undoing this wiring I'm gonna loosen these cap screws to see whether or not I'm even on the right track here I, I loosen these five screws backed them off a little bit just to see if anything happens here but it doesn't look like that's not going to come off without a fight. It's probably been on there its entire life. Now it turns out when I put the camera down, I can rock this. I just wasn't applying enough force. This, this assembly is very heavy, just this assembly alone. But we're on the right track, so I know now uh, to make it more stable, I'm going to drop the elevation all the way back down. I think before I do that, while I've got access to it, I'm going to remove the walker magnetic chuck that's on here. Uh, get that in on the cover. Put a little oil on it. Try and save that from rusting the heck. So I think when I initially saw this grinder advertised for sale, I think it was 400 or make an offer. And then I think he dropped it to like 350 um, And then, like I said, eventually, I guess he didn't get anybody. You know, I asked him about... Uh, why he had listed it as pending sale the morning that he later called me and told me to come and get it and he said yeah he says a guy said he was gonna you know gonna come out for it and he never did and he said he just you know kind of got fed up with the people games on facebook people play where they say you know they're interested and then they disappear or they make appointments and don't show up and he just wanted it out of the shop he needed the room and i remember looking at the photos and thinking to myself it looks like a magnetic chuck that's on there. I wonder if that goes with it. And sure enough, it did. So this is a Walker General. Uh, uh, sorry, Walker Ceramax. Um, this is made... Let's see, it looks like... Oh, that's interesting. Something Division Magnetic. Worcester, Massachusetts. Now that's got to be an early one, huh? Anyways, I didn't even try it. I wonder if it even works. It does. It seems a little seems a little anemic. To be honest, I'm not really getting a good I don't know. That that actually does feel like a, a true true test would be to put like a one two three block on there and see how it goes, but it's working. And you know, again, uh, this alone was worth the price of admission. All right, so I just undid this clamp, which this clamp actually sits in these little indentations here on the magnetic chuck. And then I was able to slide the chuck right off, which indicates to me that there probably supposed to be a second one of these clamps on this side that's missing. So I'm wondering whether or not that clamp is integral to this chuck and not the grinder. Either way, I'm gonna probably have to fabricate one down the road if I end up going forward with using this grinder because I doubt I'll find one. Here, let's have some fun, watch this. Um, you know what, um, hand me that metal uh, piece right there, that flat metal piece. Yes. Yeah. Pick it up, what's the matter, is it too heavy? <laughs> it's <done. laughs> Magnetic. <laughs> it's a magnetic truck. Flip that lever. Flip it up. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. I didn't really need that. I was just playing a joke I on you. I put your keys on there. Uh, it doesn't. You have to have something that has a lot of mass to it. That's got a lot of ferrous metal in it. See, that's. It's sticky, but it won't really. All right. Back at it. So today, I got to open this door up. Well, hopefully I can get in there and undo all the wires so I can undo this uh, liquid tight conduit that feeds the spindle motor. Well, as luck would have it, the wiring of this thing's pretty straightforward because there is a large three pole contactor right down here and it's clearly labeled 
This three pole contact is clearly labeled up at the top here. Uh, L1, L2, and L3, those are your three phases. Okay, and I believe the output is also pretty clearly labeled. And even if it isn't, it doesn't matter because basically L1, L2, and L3, and all three of these are interchangeable. As a matter of fact, if you switch any two, then you actually will be able to reverse rotation of the three three phase motor. That's the that's the beauty of three phase. One of the beauties of three phase. So all I want to do is make sure that I keep all the wires together that are going there. So it looks like we've got two wires going to each one, and then the wires have individual wire tags on them. So I'm going to take those off one at a time and notate where they go. So working left to right the far left terminal has two wires going to it the two wires are individually labeled number one and number seven but they're tied together and together they are labeled what appears to be one t1 the middle terminal number two and number eight they're tied together and they're called one t2 and the far right terminal has two wires going to it number three and number six and they're labeled together as one t3 it's also worth noting the routing so when i put this back together uh, i can route the cable the same way the routing of the cable it's a bundle that's tied together with electrical tape at that point there and it goes behind the wiring for that auxiliary outlet and then it goes uh up behind the wire the other wiring over here to these uh, two other lower um, connectors. Well, I got the uh, liquid tight conduit nut undone here and I can't get this to come out any further than that and I think the reason is because those wires down there that are looped apparently the wiring that runs up to the automatic oiler system right here it also looks like that wiring there is in that bundle but it wouldn't be attached to the spindle motor output I doubt it probably goes somewhere else but what they did was they had extra wire they looped it down and they just tied it to that bundle I think if I undo that tape I'll be able to uh, separate that and leave it behind well I undid the uh, electrical tape and I was able to pull all the wires out except for these three here and it's kind of hard to see in there because that transform is in the way but it almost appears like these three wires are just curled up here and that they just terminate to each other and don't go anywhere uh, I don't think they have anything to do with this now that I look at it yep that's all it was so these three wires which are labeled number five four and six five four and six are just tied to each other and go nowhere so if I take that information and I look at that wiring diagram, I'll know exactly how this is wired. So if I look at this chart right over here, I can see on the left side that T6, 5, and 4, when they're tied together, and then um, 1 and 7 are tied to each other, and uh, uh, 2 and 8, and 3 and 9. In this configuration, it's low, what they call low voltage, would be, which would be the 230 volt, because this is a 23460 volt um, capable motor. So it is wired for, for 230 volt three phase. So I won't have to change any of that wiring. I can leave it alone. I'm also going to undo this cable here. This is the low voltage feed that feeds the uh, light. And once I undo this cable, I'll be able to just remove this whole assembly out of the way completely. That is a wire bundle that goes over to a terminal strip over on the far left. So inside the main panel on the left here, there's a well-labeled, uh, it's labeled with numbers, all of the terminals on this big terminal strip right here. And they're just borrowing some voltage off of that for that light. Looks like it's this wire bundle right here pretty straightforward it's uh there's a hot wire going to uh black hot wire going to this terminal down at the bottom which oddly enough almost looks like it's labeled number 41 which is odd because it goes one through seven and then 
It almost looks like a 41, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, you can't get your head in here, Aiden. It's too tight with me working in here. Thanks anyways, though. The white wire that appears to be a neutral wire for the light is going to, interestingly enough, there are two terminals here labeled number two. I would venture to guess, yeah, there it is. There's a metal, there's a metal piece right here that's bridging these two. So these four right here are all common. These must be all, well, neutrals, maybe. I can't imagine that light is 220 volt. So I need to take this wire out, but I want to leave the other ones in. There we go. So I'm going to tighten that back up so that other one doesn't fall out. Because there are actually two wires going to that position. I don't know where that other neutral goes to, and right now I don't really care. I just want to get this out. hope that's the right one. They're kind of, kind of tight quarters here. Find out in a moment, because all that's left is the ground wire, which uh, goes to a more solid type of connector up here. So I've got to... Yeah, I gotta remove this nut and take that eye off of there. All right, so now I can take this whole assembly the light out of the way. The only thing stopping me, I think, from taking that top assembly off now is the uh, power to lift it. I guess we're gonna need to go get the loader. It ain't pretty, but it's paid for. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will work. All right, so I wrapped my sling around the arm and under through the middle there and then around the arm again and then i got my uh chain fall hooked through that so it's gonna take up the tension well i'm not crazy about that i can't get the loader close enough to be directly over it i'm pulling up at an angle but it is coming up i think a worst case scenario is i might i might have bent the pin the locating pin but that's easy enough to replace uh, I'm gonna keep pulling up and see how it goes. That's gonna want to swing. The whole damn base is moving. I don't know why it's not easing up. I had those posts sticking down so far that when I was trying to come out, it was getting caught up, but I was able to get it loose. So. Shouldn't swing too badly now. Oh, ripping the, there we go. All right. Uh, so interestingly enough, the table on this uh, comes off the same way as the one on that Rockwell does. It just, the only thing really holding it on is gravity. You can lift it right up off of the ways. So I'm just gonna, slide it onto this uh, onto this two by and then slide it onto the loader here hey everybody uh, it's New Year's Day 2019 happy new year anyways uh, yesterday started to get dark and uh, I was running out of time I really wanted to get that uh, grinder off the truck so I decided to concentrate on moving it off the truck and uh kind of forego recording the video so i where you know where this just kind of got cut off that's pretty much where i stopped recording yesterday but i wanted to show you guys today I have to pardon the audio i got a feeling it's going to be pretty bad because the wind is really bad today it's gusting we got gust up to 45 miles an hour so anyway this is an old rv cover we got a new rv cover this year and so I'm using the old RV cover. I also got a tarp under there. Got the tarp and then an old RV cover here is uh, what we're gonna use for protection on this thing. Not the greatest, but it's better than nothing. I just, I just have absolutely no room in the basement shop for this thing right now. Here comes that wind. But I just wanted to show what the heck uh, I found out about this thing. And I'm, I'm telling you, I may have bit off more than I can chew here with this grinder because uh, I don't know whether or not I could get this down my bulkhead stairs ever. 
Um, it is incredibly heavy. Uh, there were some real, um, some real tense moments there when I was lifting this off the truck. First, I tried uh, a strap, a sling that I have, one of those nylon slings. I put the nylon sling through one hole and up through the other hole there. And when I started lifting up on this thing, boy, I'll tell you, that strap was stretching a lot. And uh, I got a little nervous, so I decided to uh, reset. And I ended up running a chain down through here and up through the other hole. But uh, it was very, very heavy. It was very precarious driving the loader with that much weight on the front end. And I get over here and, uh, you know, I'm looking at the thing and I'm realizing, well, this is almost like a steel plate on the top here. Okay, that, that must be machined and then welded into position, I think, in this casting. But there's a thickness here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's got to be at least three inches thick, the casting underneath it. So I thought, well, is that a is that a uh, skirt? But I can reach and feel underneath here, and it's like, no, that's full thickness. So I think this casting in the top here is like four inches thick. I mean, it's just huge. Well, there's a better look right there. You can see the steel. <laughs> so. Even if I take this off, which I didn't bother taking this off, even if I take this off, it's kind of crazy. The other problem that I had was um, this uh, table is moved as far back this direction as it will go. And you can see it's off center. Furthermore, the two holes there that I was hooking up to are also to the rear. So when I lift, the whole thing wants to kind of go like this. So that made it real interesting getting this thing off the truck. But I, uh, I managed to get it off, but now I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to get this to go down the bulkhead stairs? In the past, um, well, the largest thing I've ever had to move down the bulkhead stairs is the mill, my milling machine, my Wells Index milling machine, which I took apart in sections. But even taking it apart in sections, the large body of the mill uh just on its own is pretty formative i just happen to have an extra one laying around so just to give you an idea uh what i did was to take my mill down i ended up taking this top turret and the ram off and i took the entire knee assembly off and I even took that bottom uh, screw jack assembly off there just for good measure. So basically that whole foot there and this whole huge casting right here, that was one big piece and I had to get that down the stairs. So what I did was I cut a piece of plywood to cover the treads. I used the loader to lower this, uh, to pick this up and hang it over the stairwell, then lower it onto down into the stairwell and as it hit the plywood let it slide down once I got it down into the basement I used a uh, Pittsburgh tool cherry picker from Harbor Freight to actually uh, generate enough lifting power to get this thing into position and I was able to do that so my thought was hey if I could do it with this thing I should be able to do that other thing but I actually think that other thing, even though it's shorter, actually weighs more than this thing does. So I'm kind of at a, a, a you know, a dilemma here. What do I do? So for right now, I think I'm just going to put the thing, uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to leave it under that tarp, and uh, I'm going to wait because I can't make a decision right now. If I could get the thing down, you know, if I could get the thing under power and show that it works, then maybe I could, I could resell it, you know? Uh, I think a big part of the reason why he wasn't able to sell it was because of the little bit of damage on the oiling system, which I could resolve, and the fact that it wasn't under power and couldn't demonstrate that it worked. But even doing that, 
would involve basically getting this thing down into the shop and doing some work to it so it's going to go down there anyways so the other alternative is the other thing i talked about possible possibly doing which would be scrapping it you know um i hate to scrap it but on the on the other hand with this much weight being here i might actually have a, you know well over a hundred bucks sitting right here in scrap value alone and i don't know how long this is going to be able to say, stay here without turning into a rusted piece of junk i mean the uh we got a ton of rain yesterday after i uh not long after i got this thing off the truck it started raining and it rained pretty much all new year's eve and it rained quite a bit and i although i had this all covered up you can see this is soaking wet just with condensation not not ideal but it is what it is oh oh and as if that isn't bad enough you see how this hole is the small hole right here this is where the threaded rod the uh jack screw that lowers and raises the whole uh the whole head that's where it, that's where it goes down into when it's lowered well, I don't know if you guys recall, but I had lowered the head all the way down with the thought of that was going to make things more stable when I took it off. That was a mistake. I should have left it fully up because by having it lowered down, the bottoms of those two massive posts were going down in these holes pretty far, and the jack screw or the lead screw was going down in this hole pretty far. And what happened was when I was lifting it up and it was trying to tilt, these were kind of getting stuck in here. These posts were getting stuck in here, but also what I didn't realize until I got it completely clear was the jack screw or the threads on that lead screw rubbed on the edge here. I think on the underside down below, because this, this is, again, this is pretty thick. It's like that, you know, it's like that thick. So I damaged the threads. Now, not horribly mangled, but enough. So the question's gonna be, you know, am I gonna be able to hone and file those threads to make them right again? Are they far enough down the shaft that they would only really be an issue when I really raise the elevation up high? I don't know. But I, I did things wrong. And hey, you know, it's the first time I ever moved anything this heavy or disassembled it you know and uh you live and learn so uh, i guess that's gonna wrap up the uh the disassembly and what's going on with this i don't i haven't decided yet what i'm calling this video i don't even know if this is going to be uh, uh part one of this grinder or maybe maybe we won't make this part one because then people are going to expect part twos and threes and like i said i might end up having to just send this down the road for scrap which is i know it's kind of a shame but the reality is you know he had this advertised uh i saw another i know where there's another dual right now a little bit bigger than this it's a fully hydraulic grinder so it would automatically go back and forth um and I, that thing's running under power and it's 450 bucks they're asking for it and they haven't sold it yet so these older surface grinders in this area uh, I know location geographical location makes a big difference I'm sure there are guys watching this video right now that would love to get their hands on a grinder like this for short money because they just don't have a lot down in their area but we're up here in the rust belt as they call it all right so uh, signing off for now we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go try and do something else